Hi, I'm Rosalie Malpe. I'm with the Markham Laboratory at the University of Oklahoma. I'm excited to be celebrating the Pioneer Library System's Summer Reading and Learning Challenge with you. I want to encourage you to have fun this summer, reading and learning with your friends and family. For more information, sign up on the Pioneer Library System website today. In our laboratory, we study weekly electric fish. These are amazing animals that live in South America and Africa and they use electricity to sense their environment and communicate with the other fish around them. The Markham Laboratory is a group of scientists from the University of Oklahoma Biology Department. Our goals are to make discoveries and train scientists. But what is a scientist? Is it somebody in a white coat with a bunch of beakers and stuff? Sometimes. But a scientist really is anyone who observes and asks questions. You can be a scientist. Here, let me show you how. We start by asking a question or making an observation. The next step is to take a thoughtful guess of what the answer is to the question we've had. This is called a hypothesis. After we have a hypothesis, we make a set of experiments to test it out. We find a conclusion of whether we are right or wrong. Either way, the last step is to communicate your findings and tell someone. We do this all together. It's called the scientific method. Scientists all over the world use this method over and over. When we combine all of our efforts, then we find out how nature works. You can be a scientist every day. Every day that you're asking questions and finding out the answers, then you're being a scientist. Now, normally we would pack up all of our fish and all of our gear and come out and meet you and interact and learn together. But I've done the next best thing. Made a video and we can learn about fish together. Let's pop into my laboratory and I'll let you see. Here. I can take this simple amplifier, put it in the water. Whoa, what was that? Would you believe that that sound is the electricity that the fish are making? Here, let's check our friend in the middle. That's completely different. Now for our third friend. It has another different signal. There are over 200 species of weekly electric fish in South America and over 200 species in Africa. There are also strong electric fish like the electric eel and the electric ray. We can group these fish loosely by the type of electricity that they make. These fish tend to either make pulses of electricity or waves. This machine is going to help us see the electric signal. And I have another speaker, because they're fun to listen to. This fish is another wave type fish, and now you can see why we call it that. You can see its signal down here looks like a wave. It's making a constant frequency of signal, and it will do that over the course of its lifetime, never changing. Now this fish is doing something a little bit different. We call these a pulse type fish and you can hear the difference right away. You can see the difference in the pulse types. It's making single pulses, one at a time, all summed up together. You can think about the differences this way. Imagine you were in a dark room and somebody blinked the lights on and off. If I just did that once or twice, you would be able to see just a little bit at a time. But if they blink them over and over and over and over and over and over again, you can see just a little bit better. That's what's happening between these two fish. The fish with a constant frequency is able to visualize its world a lot faster than the fish that's going with one pulse at a time. There's another difference you can see between pulse fish and wave fish. Pulse fish tend to sit still a lot more, and wave fish move around a lot more. It's because pulse fish 
are not able to visualize their world as fast as wave fish, like we saw before with the light example. The fish make electric fields in the surrounding water and can sense distortions in those fields with special electroreceptors on their skin. Objects that are more conductive or resistive than the water will distort the field and allow the fish to image their world. This active sensory system allowed for the development of a special communication system for each fish species. This is very much like a superpower. Like Superman can use x-ray vision to see through walls or a super spy having a secret code, these fish can sense through objects and communicate on a level that other animals can't access. Because the fish is using its electricity, it doesn't know that we can see right through this tube. It feels safe. But how do electric fish even make this electricity? Inside the fish, one cell makes a bit of electricity. When lots of cells do this, the electricity adds up. Inside the electric organ, these cells are stacked up like batteries in a flashlight. In fact, Alessandro Volta, who invented one of the first electric batteries, based his design off the bodies of electric eels and rays. But why do fish make an electric signal in the first place? Well, let's look at their environment for clues. The ability that an animal has is usually shaped by the place that it lives. This is called its habitat. For these fish in South America, they live in two types of water, white water and black water. White water is fast moving and it's full of sediments. And black water moves a little slower and it's full of tannins and leaf debris. Either way, the fish like to live inside the root systems of floating plants, like you can see here. Can you see through either of these water types? Now, what about at night? Because these fish are nocturnal, and you know what that means. These fish are nocturnal, which means that they're awake during the nighttime. That makes electric sensing a big advantage in their habitat. They can sense all around them in conditions that are hard to see with their eyes. In fact, let's get those lights back on. That's better. These are recreations of river water, but I can show you some examples of some ponds that we grow our fish in. Out here, we can keep the fish in pools with the floating plants, just like in the Amazon River Basin. Some of them will even breed. We have a lot of baby fish right now. So we've seen how weakly electric fish use their bioelectric signal. Now let's see one of ours. I've hooked up to a Backyard Brains kit. And you can see the electricity coming from my muscle every time I squeeze. Watch. Pretty cool, huh? The harder I squeeze, the bigger the signal. So all of the electric cells in my muscles are firing all at once when I squeeze. The command to do that is coming down from my brain and through my spinal cord and out to the muscles. Your body does that too. All bodies do. So we've seen how the weakly electric fish have a really cool superpower that they use to sense their environment, communicate with other fish, and to see in the dark. How neat is that? We see how our bodies have a superpower too. We use electricity for our brains, our hearts, and our muscles to work. Thanks for joining me in kicking off the Pioneer Library System Summer Reading and Learning Challenge. You can count our time together today as time for your learning challenge. Sign up today and start logging your activity. Have fun!